Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Poisson kernel on the upper half plane. Let's recall how we use the Fourier transform. So recall that a function f has a Fourier transform of f hat of xc is the integral over r of f of x e to the minus 2 pi i x xc dx and the corresponding Fourier inversion formula and Fourier inversion f of x is going to be equal to the integral over r of the Fourier transform of the function, f hat of xc, and then e to the positive 2 pi i x xc d xc, right? This is Fourier transform and Fourier inversion, right? And so in the context of setting the Laplace equation in the upper half space, we encounter functions that look like this. We see that we're going to, if we consider these this family functions, consider the family, consider these functions over here. Let's call these functions e to the minus 2 pi absolute value of c. Why? This family over here is going to be, I'm going to call this thing over here, um, p hat of y xc, right? So I'm going to call, I'm going to look at this family. These are Fourier transforms of things. I want to find out what they're Fourier transforms of. So this is what p hat is. What would the, then if this is the family p hat y of xc, then I can hopefully find a function p y of x, right? What would p y of x be? I could try to use this Fourier inversion formula. It would be the integral over r of what? Of e to the minus 2 pi absolute value of xc times y. And of course, here we're assuming what? We're assuming the upper half space so over here. Our y is greater than 0, which makes this function decaying with xc, right? e to the positive 2 pi i xc x. And then over here, we're going to have a what? So now that's my Fourier transform over here. So now we should put a x over here. So this is a dx integral, dxc integral. So now I have an x and a y parameters in my problem with integral respect to c. And so we're going to break this integral into two parts over here. This first integral is going to be the integral from negative infinity to 0. And that's when xc is negative. When xc is negative, this becomes a positive expression, e to the 2 pi xc y, e to the positive 2 pi i xc x dxc, right? So because when xc is negative, the absolute value outputs a negative, so it turns to positive, plus the integral from 0 to infinity of what? Of e. Now, when e when xc is positive, the absolute value doesn't do anything, so I get e, positive 2 pi xc y, and then e to the 2 pi i xc x dxc. Excellent. And so now what's going to happen over here, so now there's lots of common terms over here. This is going to be equal to the integral from negative infinity up to 0 of e to the what? This is xc integral, so I'm going to have an e to the xc. And I'm going to have a 2 pi y on this term over here. And I'm going to have a plus 2 pi i x dxc. Okay? Plus the integral over here from 0 to infinity of e to the what? I'm going to pull out an xc again, xc. And I'm going to have a what? A 2 pi i x minus 2 pi y. Bearing in mind again that y is greater than 0 on the perhaps space, right? D x c. Good. Now integrate this. This is going to be e to the x c 2 pi y plus 2 pi i x over 2 pi y plus 2 pi i x. Great. From negative infinity up to 0, plus, same thing over here, e to the xc, 2 pi i x minus 2 pi y over 2 pi i x minus 2 pi y, like so, from 0 to infinity. Okay. And now let's examine, let's examine what's happening over here. These values of xc, right? So these values of xc are oscillating over here, right? These things are oscillating. So what will happen to those i terms as we, the, well, first of all, when, since y is greater than 0, when I plug in these, these, these terms are oscillating over here. So in other words, these terms look like e to the cosine of 2 pi i x. So those terms are going to be just bounded terms over here because of the i. So in other words, these things won't affect any of my limits. But as when xc is negative infinity over here on the bottom limit, I'm going to have e to the negative infinity times something positive. That's going to be going to 0. So this limit over here is going to go away. Likewise, over here, this is an oscillating thing. That's going to be a cosine sine, so that's not going to affect the overall size of this thing. Since y is positive when I plug in xc equals infinity over here, and the top limit over here, that top limit is going to go away. So in other words, those the top and bottom limits go away. I just get the zero limit. So the zero limit's on top over here. When I plug in xc equals zero, the top turns into a one. So over here, this is going to become what? This is going to become one over 
2 pi y. And of course, that's the top of them, so it stays positive, plus 2 pi i x. And then over here, I need to plug in the bottom limit over here. So I'm going to have minus 1 over 2 pi i x minus 2 pi y. Okay. Now, if we subtract these things, what's going to happen? We're going to have this is equal to 2 pi i x minus 2 pi y, and then minus this expression 2 pi y plus 2 pi i x, all divided by what? All divided by, let's see, we're going to have a total of a, let's see, so this is a difference of squares over here, so I'm going to do this and this and this and this, so we're going to cancel out, so I'm going to have a total of what? I'm going to have a total of negative 4 pi squared y squared from those terms, and I'm going to have a negative because I have i i, that's going to be a 4 pi squared x squared, right? So now notice over here that the, uh, the i terms in the numerator are going to cancel out, and there's a lot of negatives over here, so I'm just going to group the negatives over here together, and so what are we going to get? We're going to get a total of negative 4 pi, negative 4 pi y, over what? Over positive, we'll turn everything to positive, a, everything's going to be 4 pi squared in the denominator, x squared plus y squared. And now the 4 will cancel out, and one of the pi's will cancel out. So this is going to be 1 over pi, and then times y over x squared plus y squared. And this over here is just the Poisson kernel on the upper f space. So this over here is p y of x, and this is the Poisson kernel on the upper half space. Now, it's easy to see that this Poisson kernel has to integrate to 1, right? We can actually just use Fourier inversion over there and see, well, what is going to be the... Uh, we know that if I plug in xc equals 0 to this formula, when I plug in xc equals 0, I get 1. So this function integrates to 1. It's not negative, right? It's a non-negative function in the upper half space that integrates to 1. And I know that if I integrate sort of away from the origin, everything is concentrated towards the origin. So this Poisson kernel is actually an approximation to identity, and we're going to use that when we solve the Dirichlet problem for the Laplacian in the upper half space in further videos. Thank you very much.